one thing that we've been discussing the last few weeks, and I'd like to go over it again and really dig into it a little bit this time because it's it's really crucial. And um, that is an exercise to help to get more sung kwa. And the, the, the concept of sung is you know releasing and, and relaxing and sinking into the intrinsic structure of the body mind that provides a foundation, which then we can extend outward and do stuff. We can do lots of cool stuff, but provided we have that. And the problem we have with a lot of the, the way we're programmed is we think do first. And we, we, we miss that essential quality of sung that is necessary to, uh, to make that happen. So the learning to feel first then do is a very high level skill. And, uh, and doing you slow it down so that it becomes a very conscious, deliberate, intentional thing that you do. And then as you get good at it, like anything else, the better you are, the more practice you are at doing something deliberately and consciously and intentionally, the less and less effort it takes to make it happen. You can't just skip to the effortless part without having done the work. And that's the essence of Kung Fu, which is intensive effort over time. And so we want to do that. So the uh, one of the questions that came up was the, how do we walk and incorporate these things? Just a simple idea about just walking down the street. And uh, Maria and I were taking a walk today in the park and, and she's been doing a, a real focus intention with this, uh, with this, this practice that is, you know, really going into the neishi and feeling that you're going, so it's not a thing of like, how much farther, how much faster, how much longer can I walk? You know, can I, you know, push it, push it, push it? No, it's the opposite. It's gliding effortlessly, moving along and noticing when the body mind says, uh uh, this is too much, and then backing off. So rather than pushing through it, which is the way a, a lot of us, as, as athletes, you know, we're trained, it's like, yeah, just, you know, no pain, no gain, push on through. It's like, no, no, back off and feel, feel what's going, and how can I reprogram my body mind so that I can make this even more effortless? So that there's this effortless expression of my movement. And so whenever we're, we're walking, the one area we really want to focus on is is how we can get the sung kwa into each step. How can we feel that? Can we relax into that? And uh, it runs counter to uh, an idea which I think a lot of people have, and it's really prevalent in you know, a lot of the uh, exercise community, things like that, and you know, the idea of buns of steel, having you know, like a really tight ass is, is, is considered to be this, this very sexy, very desirable thing. And it's kind of the opposite of what we're going for. As Sifu Valerie uh, said uh, last week, you know, we're going for a squishy baby butt. And uh, that, uh, that, that, I like that, I like that, that image. And uh, so you, you know, you want to be able to let go of that tension there in your butt as you're walking, as you're, you know, going through your form, as you're able to do the exercise. So that requires a bit of this practice, a bit of this neishi, and doing an exercise that allows you to home in on a specific way of moving, a specific way of activating your, your body connections. So the 
exercise I, I showed a couple of weeks ago, I'd like to do again. And this time really take, take some time with it and, and talk you through it. One of the keys is um, particularly when you're starting out, use something you can put your hands on to support. So in this case, I'm going to use a, a standard issue kitchen chair and uh, so the idea here is I want I want to be able to trust this because if I can't depend on that, I'm going to clench my butt. I'm going to clench my hips. I'm going to tighten up. And so to be able to have hips that are, are smooth and efficient, you need to be able to get the, the, all those muscles which are desperately trying to keep you safe and, and allow, give them instructions to relax, to, to let go. And it helps if you have something to hold on to. You don't have to put any weight on it, but you just wanna have it there as a, as a guide, as a training wheel. So, so that you can then let go, because it is the letting go that is our uh, our goal here. Face there, there we go. So I'm gonna put my right foot forward, pick up my my left heel. So once you stand up, and if you have a something you can hold on to, that would be great. Because it's real easy. If I, if I were to just demonstrate it without and just say, if I'm going like this and then coming up like that and, and, and people will try to do it, but not necessarily the right way. They can accomplish the, what it looks like, but not necessarily get the internal part, which is squishy baby butt. Okay, so you wanna get that. So you put the right foot forward, pick up your left heel and you wanna set the knee. So the knee's not gonna move at all. And you're gonna be moving, you're gonna be bowing from the toile, from the, from the inguinal crease right here. So, and you're bowing straight forward as you do this. And so we're learning to really trust as we bow forward, keep the spine straight and you're moving from, from the, uh, from the, the quad. You're relaxing down and sinking into the earth as you do that. This leg is, is totally empty. You just have a toe down just to, as a marker. But you, you bow forward and then you come up. And this means you want to feel that. And bow. So the very slowly. And letting go as you're going. And you don't want to back up at all. So you're really coming forward out over your foot as you do that, but that's okay. You've got, if you're sinking down, releasing down, you have your central equilibrium, even though you're pitched forward like this and then straighten up. So you're using it and you're relaxing your back muscles at the same time. So your back is straight, but you're releasing and bowing forward. And just hang there and just feel into that and, and then come up and bow forward. So what we're doing now is developing these muscles here on the front of the leg, the vastus medialis, which really don't get any kind of action at all, but they're crucial for the kind of work we're doing and come up. And the more we can trust those, and you may find them talking back to you right now, we'll do one more um, because they don't get a lot of work. But the more you can work those, the more you can shift to 
using the front of your thighs as your support, as opposed to your back and your butt and the back of your legs and coming up. Good. Okay, let's turn that around. We use the left leg now. So you really want to get nice and loosey goosey with that right leg. The right hip is really disconnected. And you're just using the quad. You're releasing it, allowing the weight of your body to, to drop down, to sink. Just a note, you are not shifting your knee forward. You are not going lower with your leg. You're just- Yeah, the knee, the knee is set. Notice that the knee is not moving at all. It's not moving, it's not going like this or back. It's going, not going to the side. I'm not spiraling down. I'm going just bowing straight forward as I'm doing this. And then come up and feel that. You feel yourself sinking as you come up. So we're working contradictory impulses there. One is everything down here is dropping. And so as I'm going forward, the same thing with my back, my, my torso, it's bowing forward also. I have my chair here, my trusty chair, to tell me that everything is just fine and I can really let go and really feel into my leg. And you'll notice muscles that you probably don't use very much. And that's okay. Because we're using, and when we're sung, it's a different kind of muscle power. And come up. Most of the time we're, we're thinking of the pushing away part and we're not thinking about the uh, taking a load part. And in muscle development, the, you know, like say you're doing a, a, a biceps curl. If you go like this, this is the yang part, right? The muscle is contracting. And then as you drop it slowly, it, there's more muscular development in that drop than there is in the coming up. And the same thing is true here with your sung in your legs. It's like, oh, there's, your muscles are getting more development by releasing down and feeling that support than they do when you're coming up. So even as I'm straightening up, it's not my, I'm not pushing away from the earth to do that. I'm just rocking from the, from the quad. 